Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the latest of the Flexible Space Association's webinars. Um, I'm Jane Sarton, I'm the Executive Director of the Flexible Space Association, and we're joined this afternoon by Emma Jones, who is the founder of Enterprise Nation, um, which offers a wide range of business support to, to small businesses. Um, and both Emma and um, Enterprise Nation have been um, good friends of the Flexible Space Association, and I think we, we share a lot of common interests in, in what we do. So I'm going to hand over to Emma in just a moment, but um, just to encourage everyone to post any questions in the chat box as we go along. Um, and Emma will either pick those up or we, uh, as she goes, or we will um, pick them up at the end um, after Emma's presentation, which will be around um, 20 minutes. So I shall now disappear myself from the screen and, um, and hand over to Emma. Amazing, quite as if by magic, Jane, I then have slides appear as well. They're incredibly well run. Um, so thank you very much, Jane. Lovely to be here. As you say, we've been friends of the Flexible Association uh, in your pre-days when it was BCA. So um, lovely to join you. Uh, I know it's been a tumultuous time for workspace operators, um, as indeed it has for small businesses. So delighted to talk, um, as Jane mentioned, for about 20 minutes. And what I'd love to cover is what we've seen in terms of delivery of small business support. So I'm going to reference small business support that's been delivered by the government, uh, that's been delivered by the private sector, of which we've seen a huge amount, and also how small businesses have rallied together to support each other. Um, the reason why I'm uh, sort of particularly focusing in on the programmes that I am is I do feel there's opportunity for workspace operators to ultimately host these support programmes when we get back to being much more physical next year. Uh, I have to say Enterprise Nation as a business in our own right, last year we ran 400 plus physical events across the UK and of course we ourselves have pivoted as a business and all of those events have gone online this year. We're hoping to get much more physical again next year. So in referencing these support programmes that I'll talk about, as I say, I do feel this opportunity for workspace operators to essentially be housing this activity when businesses get back out and back into business. Um, I'm also going to reference something around startups, which I think hopefully might bring some hope and optimism to workspace operators. So, as I say, lovely to be with you and let us run through what we've seen. Um, for those of you who haven't come across Enterprise Nation, we are a company that delivers business support. Our sole job is to help people start and grow their own small business. And if I just um, kind of move on to this first slide, hopefully the reason that kind of gives me context to talk today is um, we've helped, I just tweeted it this morning actually, um, as of today, 506,000 unique users have come onto our platform this year. So we've welcomed over half a million small businesses, uh, predominantly since March, who have landed on our platform looking for advice and support. Um, and just before I go into the support programmes, uh, to give a bit of context in terms of what we've seen over the past seven months, uh, we kind of split this year into kind of three phases. Uh, phase one, which was very much kind of March to May 2020, we refer to as the dash for cash. So this is when businesses headed to Enterprise Nation to essentially find out which financial rescue package they were eligible for. So businesses wanted to know how do I apply for a bounce back loan? How do I furlough people? Can I furlough myself? Am I eligible for the self-employment income support scheme? So essentially what businesses wanted to know is where is the cash going to come from to keep me trading through these very uncertain times? Then in mid-May, we kind of moved into phase two. Um, most businesses, and, and just the insight that comes from this is we have got very close to the community this year. So we've been doing weekly surveys, regular focus groups, listening to small businesses, of course, every day on social media and uh, hearing their comments on the platform. So we went back out to the community in May time. And by that time, most businesses had sorted their financial rescue plan and what they were saying to us that they wanted at that stage was any kind of content training or education 
on how to do more online. So the big, huge appetite was help me build a website, help me figure out how to use social media. I'm a restaurant and want to pivot onto a delivery app. Can you help me do that? So this huge thirst for digital knowledge and content was how we essentially define phase two. Help me do more online was um, essentially kind of the epitome of that phase. And we're now in what we feel is phase three, um, which is what we're referring to as the pivot period. So many small businesses, and as I say, I'll kind of end with this note of optimism, but many small businesses in their absolute ambition to keep trading, know that they have to diversify, pivot, change the way they do business. And that's the big uh, sort of trend that we're seeing at the moment is businesses saying, can I sign up to programs or can I get information on how I find a new customer base or come up with a new product or look at a new way of working? So they're the kind of three phases that we've seen. And as I say, the volume has been over half a million small businesses who have come seeking that support. So in this first slide, I just kind of wanted to reflect um, that there has indeed been a lot of support available. Um, I never quite, when I hear small businesses say there was no support for me, well, I, I kind of always uh, kick back a little bit at that comment because indeed there's been a wealth of support. So this is just a kind of a slide um, that shows it's our Hot Topics page from last week. And you can see it's quite difficult to read and therefore that was almost the point of this slide is there's so much support available, which is everything from the bounce back loans, there's information there on new coronavirus cash grant programmes, there's lots of digital events, how to get your Christmas sales ready in time. So lots of support coming from different directions. So first of all, the government, um, of course, have been, um, I guess, the first party to step up to deliver support to small firms. And just the three programmes that have particularly related to small businesses and been hugely activated have been the furlough programme, self-employment income support scheme and the bounce back loans. So as I say, that was almost kind of back in excuse me, the March, April, May time when businesses were looking for that funding, these were the central government cash programmes that they activated. But of course, central government has also sent out its funding to local authorities. And so as you can see from this slide, uh, everyone that we've spoken to in a local authority has had an incredibly busy time because they've been distributing cash grants to businesses. I know that you'll well know this as workspace providers that kind of the first tranche of cash grants went out to the retailers, the hospitality businesses. Uh, then there was a second level of discretionary grant um, that quite in quite a few areas went to businesses who indeed may have been your clients. So kind of residents in co-working spaces. Uh, the government actually more recently has given another uh, tranche of money to local authorities for something called the Additional Restrictions Grant. So this is the equivalent of £20 per head of population for each local authority area. And the council, each of the councils have discretion as to how they spend that money, but it should go towards small businesses in their local authority areas. So that's just the latest cash grant that's come out, the Additional Restrictions Grant, which you will start to see the spend coming out. Um, I suppose the one thing that we're kind of making a comment at Enterprise Nation on this is it's great to see the largesse of this money that's going out. What of course there isn't is not necessarily any strategy behind who gets the funding and indeed measuring any of the outcomes of what that funding leads to. And of course much of that is because the speed at which government has had to send these funds out has meant, first of all, quite fraudulent activity for one thing. There were lots of loopholes, but also there haven't been many measurement um, indicators put in place. So good to see the amounts of funding. But I guess one thing in hindsight we would have loved to have seen is was it going to the right audience and how have those businesses used that funding to keep their business trading and, dare I say, become more productive and more innovative as a result. 
But in addition to funding, um, government have been very clear that they want to help small businesses get access to support. So this is something that we've run for the business department, Bayes, uh, which we launched in August, which is called the Recovery Advice for Business Programme. And this is essentially where government sends small businesses to our platform and we connect those businesses to advisors to access free advice calls. Uh, this uh, comes to an end on the 31st of December, but you'll see that we've worked in partnership with advisor bodies. So this is the first five founding partners for this programme was Institute of Chartered Accountants of England and Wales, the likes of CIPD, the Advertising Association, the Law Society. So they came forward to essentially say, we want our members who are the accountants, the lawyers, the HR experts, to step up and offer their free support to small businesses during this great time of need. That equals the Recovery Advice for Business programme, which of course we hope will be long standing. And that's just one thing to say actually is, um, I know it's been a very challenging year, but when we look at the silver linings that hopefully we'll be able to take from 2020, one of them is that um, small businesses, we've seen a reverse in the decline of small businesses accessing advice. So if you look back over the past decade, there has been a downward spiral in the number of small businesses taking advice from the likes of accountants, lawyers, etc. Well, of course, in the past seven months, that has been reversed. So small business appetite for advice is on the up. And of course, as you can imagine, as a small business support provider, we're hoping that that beds in and continues because it's absolutely the fact and lots and lots of research reports have proven this out, that businesses that get advice grow better and faster than businesses that don't. So we're hoping this advice culture really beds in and is not just for COVID, but continues to remain over the next years because we'll have fitter businesses as a result. So government has done its job when it comes to support, um, but the private sector have been incredible in stepping up. Um, you can see here a couple of press releases early on. Um, I have to say one observation that I took at this stage and even since actually is, you'll see quite a few of the names that I'm about to reference are big US technology companies. Um, and I've sometimes thought over the past couple of months that, you know, the likes of Google, Facebook, who were very quick to step up to say, right, how can we help? What can we do? Not just for small businesses, actually, but for the NHS, for citizens, um, that you do sometimes wonder if the philanthropic nature that you sometimes see in the US is is now kind of showing through. Um, whereas we haven't necessarily had as many UK companies step up in the same nature to offer this support. But um, the private sector stepped up early, Google, Facebook, and um, I'll come on to share a couple of programs that we ran, which I think are reflective of what we've seen um, in this uh, period to help small businesses. So the first program that we launched was with Salesforce. Um, they had launched in the US this program called Small Business Cash Grants, where essentially they were giving out money to small businesses who'd been particularly affected. We were their delivery partner across the UK. Uh, we ran it in England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, and essentially distributed about £850,000 worth of cash grants in £5,000 allocations to small businesses who pitched in to say how their business had been affected and how they would spend this cash grant. And as you can imagine, just amazing stories of businesses who said what feels like a relatively small amount of money, but that kind of £5,000 cash grant, how it literally either kept their business going or indeed it saved their business because they were able to buy new equipment, they were able to build a website very quickly to suddenly get to their customers. Incredible uh, stories of survival that come from, as I say, what can feel like a relatively small amount of funding. Um, the programme we're very uh, sort of entrenched in at the moment, uh, launched in July, is a programme called the Amazon Small Business Accelerator. So this is Amazon's response to help small businesses uh, through this time. 
And our target for this programme is to train 200,000 small businesses to help them be more digitally savvy. And it's not just about selling on Amazon. We've got an e-learning programme, which is how to use social media, how to figure out your costings, how to get your packaging right. So it covers all elements of business. But the thrust of the programme is you come into it maybe as quite a physical business, maybe you're a retailer or you're a business that hasn't really used social media or email marketing. And our job is to give you the training, the skills and the connections so that hopefully you come out of it a digitally fitter business. So this has involved uh, e-learnings I mentioned, but also boot camps. We've run uh, six sector focused boot camps. So for kind of food and drink, fashion, homewares, but we've also just done our first regional boot camp. So last week we hosted a boot camp for businesses in the West Midlands. And there's many more of those to follow because in uh, expanding this program, we call it ASBA for short, the Amazon Small Business Accelerator. We've got someone in-house now who's looking at what we call ASBA local. So this is how do we take the Business Accelerator program and apply it in local areas. So we've got 18 regions now who are signed up to say, can you bring this training and deliver it at a local level? So I know there's just been a call today with Tees Valley Council around doing a boot camp in Tees Valley that will be opened by their mayor, because, of course, everything about this programme is something that local authorities, local mayors want to promote. And I should say the key element in all of this, you know, why are small businesses desperately wanting all of this training? And I know it sounds very simple and straightforward is because all of their customers have now gone online. So the reason why it's so imperative that businesses figure out how to use these platforms is because that is where their customers are. And uh, it's not for the purposes of today, but I'm sure there'll be lots of philosophical discussions next year around one thing that COVID has done is probably put more power in the hands of these digital platforms that give you a route to market, because if that's where customers are, that's where small businesses have got to be trading and operating as well. So this is the Amazon program, again, just um, a sign of private companies stepping up. And then last Thursday, this is the latest program we launched with Uber, where again, Uber could see a couple of things. Um, their earners, so Uber drivers and Uber couriers, are incredibly entrepreneurial. So many, many Uber earners have actually, they do their driving or their couriering on the side to actually complement a business that they're also running on the side. So we launched a program called Business Builder, where Enterprise Nation is helping Uber earners take what is a side hustle business and build income in that business. Uh, we launched on Thursday and on, on Thursday had 2,000 applications from Uber earners, just an incredible response, which shows, you know, their entrepreneurial energy is very much alive. They just want the education and training to build those skills and, of course, build their business. Um, and another element of this program is for restaurants. So it's for those restaurants who, of course, many have had to very quickly change into takeaway outlets. And of course, Deliveroo and Uber Eats are the platforms that they're using, again, just to reach their customers. So incredible to see these private sector companies step up and say, right, we accept that small businesses are using our platforms to get to market. But how can we help deliver the training so small businesses know really how to boost their business using digital technologies? So lots of support from the private sector. And then the third element of support is peer support. So I guess this is one of um, our other big observations from the past few months is how much small businesses have, um, I quite often use the word cocooned together. So they have come together to help each other figure out what's going on and how they deal with it. So this is um, what we call our local leaders network. So we have a national network of amazing people called local leaders um, and they host, well, pre-COVID, they hosted physical meetups in their localities. 
Again, they've all pivoted online and uh, however, they've kept going. So they host virtual meetups in their areas. You can see in Essex, Surrey Heath and Devon, uh, we've got uh, today and tomorrow, but lots of these events happening across the UK each month. And every month we have a call with all of our local leaders. So we bring them together and essentially we kind of ask them, what are you hearing from your peer groups who come together? And since March, one thing has been very clear, which is previously businesses would go to local meetups for purposes of business. They would go to network, to find new clients, uh, to figure out what's a good website builder. Um, but what has changed, we've seen this year, is the local leaders are saying small business owners are now coming to these peer groups for much more psychological reasons. They actually want the peer support to boost their confidence. And it is incredible to see, and you've probably seen this many times in your workspaces yourselves, that if you put a business owner with another one and one starts the conversation by saying something like, oh, I'm having a real issue, you know, I've just hired someone, it's not working out, they're impacting the culture, what do I do? Then the other one says, I had exactly the same issue and this is how I dealt with it. You visibly watch the confidence levels rise because the business owner essentially knows that they're not the only one to have gone through this experience and they need that peer support to know that they're not alone. So support has come, central government, local government, Lots of big private sector, big tech brands stepping up to say, how can we support? How can we offer training? But of course, small businesses have rallied around each other and said, let's support each other through this too. So incredible amounts. As I say, support at every turn for businesses, both financial, but also kind of mental and practical training. So all levels. And then the final thing that I wanted to mention all of that support that I've just covered, as I say, I feel will continue um, into 2021. And I feel it will be looking for a physical home in 2021, which I think offers great opportunity to workspace providers. But then there's another trend that we have observed um, since July, uh, which is the startup boom that's happening in the UK at the moment. Um, and actually quite early on, I did see um, a comment in the Times that I think it was IWG had reported record numbers of inquiries coming through from startups wanting to move into spaces. And we've definitely seen this at Enterprise Nation. So there's a couple of official stats that show the startup boom is underway. Companies House uh, in July and August actually recorded the highest ever months for the numbers of companies being formed. Uh, startup loans, which is the government provider of funding, also seeing record numbers of applications. And so whichever kind of factor you look into, many people are starting businesses. And just a, a comment on that, because, again, we get lots of questions from journalists essentially saying what is going on and why are people at this crazy time starting businesses? So there is an element to this of what's called necessity entrepreneurship. So this is when maybe people have sadly been made unemployed and therefore they go self-employed because they have no other option. They can't find another job. But actually, most of what we're seeing at the moment is what's called opportunity entrepreneurship, which is much more focused on where people are spotting gaps in the market. We saw this at the beginning of lockdown. We heard from so many people who said, you know, I live when that one of the first businesses we profiled in lockdown is a business called Clapham Fresh. It was a guy who was working a day job. Uh, he then got made redundant. He couldn't get fresh fruit um, and veg delivered to his door. He thought, actually, I think I'm going to start a business on the back of that. He's now got his own industrial premises. He's scaling his production. So there's a lot of people who spotted gaps in the market and essentially said, this is going to be the time that I get started. There's also been a whole raft of people who were put onto furlough. Of course, at some point in the UK, a couple of months ago, we had 9 million people on furlough. Many of those during work time had what's called a side hustle. So they had been working a day job. They were building their business at nights and weekends. When you're put on furlough, of course, you now have full time to focus on your business venture. So many people have used this 
as the time that they wanted to actually build that business that had been a side hustle and now is a full-time going concern. So this, I think, also offers hope to workspace providers is that we have millions, well, I must not exaggerate, we have hundreds of thousands of new startups, of course, at the moment operating from home, but potentially as they grow, leveraging the digital training and support that I've mentioned, they'll be looking for physical space and hopefully heading to all your workspaces to get what they need. So hopefully that's given a good summary, um, as I say, of what we've seen. So kind of our observations from the months that have gone, the support on offer from the government, from the private sector, but also businesses supporting each other. And as I say, that will need a home at some point soon. And then finally, the startup boom. So hopefully that's been a little bit useful. And Jane, uh, lovely to see you back on screen. Very happy to take any questions. Magically returning. Thank you very much, Emma. I think that's an awful lot of information that our members will find really useful. Um, just to um, and just to remind everyone that the opportunity to ask questions is, is still there. Um, so um, Emma, right at the start, you made reference to um, workspace operators perhaps having the opportunity to host some of these um, these events and training things. How, how can they look and take up that opportunity? Yeah, I think it would be connecting sort of now actually with all of those who are delivering support. And as I say, Jane, kind of support at all those levels. And forgive me, because I'm sure many of your workspace operators are doing this anyway, but connecting in with local authorities, we're speaking to so many local authorities at the moment who are launching pivot projects. We're delivering one for the London Borough of Tower Hamlets. For Wandsworth, we've just started to deliver a new digital programme to help their small businesses keep trading. So local authorities are upping their game when it comes to delivery of support. So I think engaging with the local authorities, um, engaging with your local growth hub. Um, I didn't mention, actually, because we haven't been as close to this project, but some element of government funding that came out probably about a month ago was money that went out to the 38 growth hubs to deliver a program called peer-to-peer -peer networks i think it's called which is where every growth hub has now got money to bring together small businesses and of course at the moment this is happening online but again ultimately i think next year the growth hubs will be looking where are the spaces and places that we can carry on these peer networks and I think if you can connect in with them now, you've got a good opportunity to kind of make the most of that. And then the big corporates, um, you know, we deliver lots of support for them, but the likes of Google, who deliver it in their own way, Microsoft, I think reaching out to these corporates to say, at some point, businesses want the physical strength of coming back to actually network with human beings. I think everyone's looking forward to that. Um, there was a brilliant piece, actually, I don't know if Huckletree is listening, but there was a great report out from Huckletree a couple of weeks ago. And I did think, I, I'm sure they would say this anyway, but I thought it was absolutely true. And I think they said something like 89% of people who work in companies are desperate to see their teammates again. But business owners feel that about their peers as well. So um, I guess, in essence, reach out to the support providers that I've mentioned in the slides make your offer known and I think when the time comes for this activity to be a bit more physical then hopefully there'll be strong connections between local workspace provider local support provider and uh, everyone will benefit yeah I think that the novelty of working from home particularly when it's so lovely and the weather in the summer is definitely wearing <laughs> wearing off now that it's not quite the same um a couple of questions through and how, how do companies sign up for um activities such as the amazon accelerator and um can there be a link hosted on their website onto the advice line uh so yes you can sign up it's um the amazon accelerator is enterprisenation.com forward slash accelerator so that's where all the program details are i should have said all of it's free um so it's all completely free training for small businesses and um one of the things, again, with the ASBA local that I mentioned, so Diane, who's running that within Enterprise Nation, I'm sure she would love to speak to workspaces around, can we start to deliver physical events in physical spaces next year? Uh, and she can share with you the regions who are particularly hot at the moment on accepting it into their area. So as I say, we hosted a boot camp in the West Midlands. Um, Andy Street, who's the mayor, is a massive supporter of small businesses kind of doing more digitally 
Um, so West Midlands has been very strong. Southwest, we've had huge amounts of interest from the Southwest um, for all things kind of digital. And then, as I say, there's kind of conversations going on across the UK. So I'm sure Diane would want to speak to lots of workspaces around could we see a physical manifestation of um, the ASBA programme? But yeah, if you actually just want to sign up for the programme, enterprisenation.com forward slash accelerator. Okay, thank you. I mean, perhaps, um, Emma, just to broaden it out a bit, whilst we have the opportunity of, of you here to, to, to speak to, and you obviously have a huge understanding of small businesses. What do you think it is that makes Flexible Workspace so attractive to small businesses, just to get inside the minds bit of the, the small business owner and... Um, yeah, what, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, crikey, I think there's a whole um, host of things, actually. So one is professionalism. Um, you know, I still feel the element of, and, and actually when Enterprise Nation first launched, which was a long time ago, 13 years ago, um, we were kind of what was called the home business website. You know, our first book was called Spare Room Startup, How to Start a Business from Home. Everything we were about was kind of running a business from home. But people were always embarrassed to say that they ran their business from home because it just didn't have quite, you know, your clients wouldn't think you're a proper business if you said you ran your business from home. And I still think that's the case today. So there's this element of, and I will never forget when Enterprise Nation had its first office, I felt all of a sudden we've grown up. I can invite clients to an office rather than saying, do you want to hang out in my spare room, which just has not got the same ring to it. So definitely, of course, professionalism gives businesses that option. By virtue of its name, Flexible Space Association gives small businesses the flexibility that they're looking for of going into contracts and out of contracts. I appreciate that's probably not been ideal over the past few months because what comes with that flexibility is, of course, the flexibility to get out of contract. So I appreciate that doesn't always work. Um, but I have to say, Jane, the biggest thing, and, and I speak now as someone who runs a business with 27 people in it who are all currently working from home, but we're all heading back into the office tomorrow. I have to say it's this collegiate missing your colleagues, which for me has been the biggest um, sort of observation I've had of this particular kind of time even though I have to say kind of as Enterprise Nation we have all got much tighter and bonded it's been a very busy time for us the team have been amazing and they're all very connected by this kind of mission that we're on and what we have to achieve however I've had to really watch out for the mental health of the team when they have not been able to just you know down for a moment it's just been full-on work and bless them there's been no water cooler chat moments so that element of kind of just getting to know who you work with I think is a great benefit of kind of being in a space and just the, the final thing on this because actually and again I know I shouldn't necessarily speak about Enterprise Nation's personal experience because we speak on behalf of our small businesses but um we're hosted with the office group in Whitechapel and one thing that we're doing is we're actually changing the whole um, layout of our office space. So currently we have desks for everyone. Um, actually, our project over December is we're going to take out a number of the desks. We're having a soft furnishings area. We're putting a bar in the office. And therefore, and this is in response to the team. We kind of went to the team and said, can you ever imagine coming back in, sitting on your laptop for eight hours with your head down? And they said, no, no, no. When I come back in now, it's going to be for meetings, to chat with my colleagues, to you know come up with new ideas. So essentially, we're trying to create a more creative and productive collaboration space. I'm sure your members will have heard lots of this over the past few months. So we're changing the look and the feel of the space the space is still critically important to us. We're just changing how it functions to respond to what the team have said and to respond to one thing that we think has bedded in, which is people now like some time working from home, but they still want to return to the office for other parts of the working week. Yes, absolutely. I'm sure we're going to see a, a much greater mix of working patterns going forward. But I think it's increasingly becoming clear that the office is def has definitely still got a role, big role to play in, in the running of, of businesses of, of all sizes. And something that a lot of our members do, but it really varies, it is run um, particular activities themselves to try and support the small businesses that are in their, their space. 
do you think that's helpful? Um, have you got any tips on what, what, what would be particularly good for our members to do to both support small businesses that are in their premises, but also perhaps encourage others to, to come in and join them? Yeah, well, I guess I'm very biased on this. I do think it's helpful. Um, and I always remember, actually, that I think the first time I ever spoke at um, the Flexible Space Association conference, so you weren't called that at the time. <laughs> and um, I think kind of the main thing that I said is kind of almost don't just sell a desk sell the community and the desk comes as part of it um and we've always been big believers in that in terms of you know where businesses want to go into is of course a beautifully designed space but they also want to go into a space where they're plugged into who is it who's kind of operating next to me uh, can i sit down with an accountant and kind of talk to them and um of course it, there's a very financial and kind of business reason for doing this which is back to what I said that businesses who get support grow better and faster than those that don't to keep clients in a building you'll want to make sure they've got support because they're going to live for longer and therefore pay their rent for longer so there's definitely a business reason to doing it one thing that we're looking at at the moment um, which we we've actually asked someone to do a dedicated piece of work for us on this is um, IWG in the US have got a model where they when a, a client comes into a workspace IWG will say, well, this is how much it is for your space. Would you like to add on to that HR services, accounting services, payroll, etc.? And that's one thing we're looking at to see, could there be in the UK a, a kind of a model of support plus space on one bill at the end of the month? So because, again, for small businesses, what they desperately want, they're low on time. So they want something that's really time efficient. And if they can pay in one place for multiple services, they're more likely to do it. So we're kind of looking to say, could that be a model in the UK where it's just plugged into the space in which you operate? And just the final thing on that. And again, if there's kind of anyone listening, thinking, oh, you know, there's no point in looking at new models because kind of businesses aren't coming back. We have seen a lot of businesses grow through this period. So there's a great business called Books That Matter. I always talk about her because she's a young female entrepreneur who won an award that we did a couple of years ago. Anyway, she's got a book subscription business. So she sends books to your door every month. She's grown threefold during COVID. There's a new business that approached us last week called Sculpt, where they send little do-it-yourself sculpture things to your door. They're now on 200 grand a month turnover. I interviewed a guy last week on one of our lunch and learn events who runs a business called Please Cakes, which is cheesecakes. I said to him, have you got on during COVID? He was like, we can't make cheesecakes quick enough. They're doing a bake at home cheesecake. They've come up with a new product called Freeze Cakes, which is cheesecake frozen. So there are loads of businesses who actually have had a pretty good COVID. And what they're now looking for is, first of all, space. And quite often for some of them, this is the first time they can afford to and have grown enough to take space. But they want space that does come with that support. They need accounting help because potentially they're looking for money. They want HR support because they're taking new people on. So if they can find all of that in one place and one package, I think that's probably a really good solution for the small business and hopefully good extra revenue for workspace operators. Yes, as you say, it's all these new businesses that have come out of it. And in June, I was given a three month subscription to um, a kit that comes through to allow me to bake cakes and things. And I loved it so much that I then bought another six month subscription myself for bread baking. So and it just comes through the letterbox every month. Um, so I think we're sort of winding up towards towards the end. And it's clearly been a really tough year for businesses of all sizes. Um, yes, small, medium, large and the other, the, 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 um, the international ones. But it is now starting to feel like there's a glimmer of hope, I and mean, particularly on this, we're getting more more news on on vaccines. What would be your parting messages for message for business owners in 2021? Uh, well, just stick with it, and it's in, been incredible actually. And we sent this to the business department yesterday that one of the most amazing things I think to have come from this year is that business founders have become so incredibly mentally strong and the number of business owners i've spoken to who just say if i've managed to get through this bring on transition i can deal with brexit and they're just kind of like you know i can deal with anything if i'm still here and still standing 
I can still keep going. And so, as I say, there's many businesses who are looking to next year in a really hopeful way and saying, actually, I'm going to take all of the digital learnings. I'm going to take the productivity of my team that's been bedded in this year. I'm going to take these growth opportunities of new trade deals that the UK is doing as we leave Brexit. And they are looking ahead with hope and to generate much more revenue. So I do, and I know it's a, an odd time and an odd thing to be saying, but I do think the future is very bright for small businesses because mentally they're super strong. They've figured out their finances. They've understood how they use digital technologies to keep growing. So in a way, we've got a much, much fitter base of businesses to go forward. So hopefully good news, as I say, for all of your members. Yeah, absolutely. A positive note to end on. So thank you very much, Emma. That has been been re really useful, I'm sure, for everybody. And I know that you've got lots of information on the Enterprise Nation website if people want to, to find out find out more. So um, just in ending, we have um, one more webinar um, of 2020, um, which is going to be on Tuesday, the 15th of December, um, reopening, reinvention and technology preparing for the year ahead. So hopefully that's going to be also a positive um, look ahead at what at what can be done to prepare for um, for 2021. And details of that are um, on our website and we'll be showing them over the next few days more widely. But um, thank you very much, Emma. And um, thank you everyone for watching. Goodbye. Thank you, Jane.